Moving Out is a new physics-based experience which, although playable in single player, lends itself very much towards couch co-op, promising madcap characters and crazy, hectic gameplay. Should you move heaven and earth for it? Well, I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to Team 17 for the review code. And now, let's find out. Have fun. Play on your own with some friends. Get the whole gang back together. You the basic premise of Moving Out is an incredibly simple one. You are a removal team who need to take a set number of items from a property and put them into the back of your removal truck. You do this by walking up to an object and pressing ZL to grab onto it. You can then pull it along by moving the left stick. You can play in one player mode or with up to four players locally, with the amount of items needing to be removed increasing if you do play with more than one player. The main hook of the game is that everything is physics based, so everything you do in terms of where you hold a piece of furniture and how you move will affect momentum. One of the biggest strengths of the game is how you must communicate in multiplayer in order to succeed, something that all of the best of these types of games must achieve. You won't be able to negotiate a tight corner with a double bed unless you discuss who should walk backwards and when one person must pivot. You will begin to feel like the Chuckle Brothers as you, to me, to you, your way around each building. Of course, you could just smash the window and sling it out that way, as the crow flies is almost always an option in this game as well, and there is no penalty for breakages, which although sounds like it might make the game way too easy, it becomes a part of the puzzle. Is it best to break a window and use the recent layer of snow to slide objects down, or is it just quicker to use the more conventional route? Some items can only be used by two people, and holding down the X button will highlight all items that need moving and how many people must move it. The physics feel pretty good for the most part, although turning while holding a heavy item does take some getting used to, and will feel quite awkward at first. As well as just grabbing objects, you can also throw them by holding down Y, and aiming where you want them to go. This is good for getting smaller items into the van quickly, for throwing items across to a partner in order to speed things up, although if it's a fragile item your partner must catch it, or for both of you to lift and throw a heavier object into the van when space starts to become a bit tight. Again, throwing an item together does feel awkward at first, but this is because you need to communicate, almost needing to do the counter free before letting go of Y. They certainly got the feeling of working together to lift something heavy spot on, as anyone who's ever had to do it in real life will testify. The levels will become more elaborate as you progress, with the introduction of multi-story houses, stage hazards such as oil spills or busy roads, and even levels where you are trying to catch and deliver live animals. Nothing like chasing a chicken round a field to make you feel like a Kentucky Fried Idiot. It's in these stages where the game's at its best, trying and failing to contain a sheep in the back of the van as the time ticks down, with you both getting in each other's way, trying to recapture it, will no doubt evoke one of two reactions, sheer rage or uncontrollable laughter. Whichever it is, hopefully it's the second, it's these kind of reactions that make games memorable, and moving out certainly has this potential. As I mentioned, it's playable with up to four players, although I only got to try it with two, although there is no online mode in the Switch version, which is disappointing. There also begins to be a bit more variety in the settings of the stages as you move through, such as a haunted house and even a clever level based on the classic arcade game Frogger. Whilst there is certainly not just one way to fill the van, it does feel at times as if there's an optimal way, and once or twice, it felt as if the way we had stacked the items was beyond fixing and needed a restart. It pays to start with larger items, the game tells you as much, but even then, having gone through systematically taking out the largest items first, starting with those nearest to the exit, it still led to times where a particularly big item was discovered back towards the end of the house and couldn't really be fit on without taking a fair amount of the other items off. I would definitely suggest surveying the items around the house before beginning to stack to avoid such problems. Each level has three time goals, and depending on which one you achieve on completion of the level will determine if you are awarded a gold, a silver or a bronze. If you run out of time then you will need to retry the level unless you have one of the assists on, and I'll cover these in more detail in a moment. As well as the time medals, there are three objectives to try and complete for each stage. These are hidden until you complete the level for the first time, and consist of things such as not breaking a window, scoring a goal in the football nets in the garden, or bringing the plastic flamingos with you from the front of the lawn. Completing any of these will go towards unlocking games in the arcade mode. This is unlocked a little way into the game, and whilst I love the idea and very much appreciate the implementation of such a mode, it basically sees you playing versions of classic 70s style arcade games, the floaty controls of the game, which are fine for the main part, do not work well in these arcade games, and it was little more than a brief distraction because of this. 
Just to touch on the controls as a whole a bit more then, as well as the move set already discussed, you have a jump, which is useful for when you've backed yourself into a corner in the van, or for manoeuvring past your partner. You also have a slap move, which will come in handy at times. It can be a little difficult to grab the side of an item that you want sometimes, even when you are standing next to it. This can be frustrating, especially when you are against the clock trying to get those gold medals. Stacking items into the van can also be frustrating, especially if you need to do some rearranging and end up grabbing the wrong objects, causing everything else to topple out. One idea that is very well implemented is that of the aforementioned assist mode. This is basically a way to reduce the difficulty of the game, but instead of just reducing the number of objects that must be moved, for example, it instead gives you a list of ways that you can cater the experience to your own preferences to ensure that everyone can access the game. For instance, if you enjoy the game but find stacking the items in the van difficult, have it that items disappear as soon as they are placed in there, negating this particular hurdle. If you find the weight and maneuverability of the multi-person items a challenge, have it that they are lighter. I'm sure that there will be people that will think this defeats the purpose of the game, but multiplayer games such as these can only stay fun when everyone can access them to a decent standard, and this is a good way of allowing that to happen. At the end of the day, if you don't need them, you can completely ignore them. Gameplay is certainly fun, being perfectly playable and enjoyable in single player, but shining in multiplayer, where the necessity for good communication always brings out the best in such games, and it scores 16 out of 20. Controls do take some getting used to in order to start being more efficient and chasing those good times, and whilst not always perfect, they work well and score 14 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, moving out goes for a simple aesthetic which uses a strong colour palette to bring everything to life. Characters are quirky and the houses are well designed. I loved the intro which was a cheesy 80s motivational company VHS which had clearly been taped over someone's wedding cassette. This actually sets the tone well for the humour which is used to good effect throughout, mainly by way of the exchanges between characters before and after stages. These are delivered via text but are amusing to read and give the characters a lot of charm, making them quite endearing, like little lovable idiots. Other little touches that further build on this charm are the business cards that show up on the screen every so often with funny slogans. The humour is genuinely on point. The camera will zoom out to accommodate multiple players when you move further away from each other, and this can make it a bit difficult to see what's happening at times, but other than splitting the screen, I don't really see what else they could have done to be fair. There are times when speech is used, albeit sparingly, and the music is perfectly serviceable, although it did become a bit repetitive after a while. Visuals are simple and perhaps lacking in variety, but it's the charm and the humour that really shines through, and they score 14 out of 20. Audio is fine in and of itself, but did start to feel a tad repetitive, and also scores 14 out of 20. Moving out costs £19.99, €24.99, $24.99, or $37.50. Australian there is a fair sized campaign for this price, but it's more the compulsion to get gold stars and unlock the extra objectives which will give the game its longevity. Factoring in the local multiplayer for up to 4 players, playable with a single Joy-Con each, and value for money is certainly there. The lack of an online mode may affect this for some people though. There is a physical version available, and it was around 7 to £10 more than the digital version on the few places I checked, and was always more expensive than both the PS4 and Xbox One versions, which is disappointing. Value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Moving Out is a fun co-op game in the vein of games such as Overcooked, but with the physics of human fall flat. It doesn't quite have the same addictive quality of Overcooked, at least not in one session, with a couple of levels generally feeling enough per night before repetition sets in a little. However, for half an hour or so a night, the pandemonium that can ensue really does make for a good time, and this is most certainly a worthy addition to an ever-growing list of co-op or party games on the Switch. The assist mode also means that it can be made as accessible as necessary in order to negate frustration when there's a disparity in skill level between players. Moving Out gets a Switch Up score of 73%. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you as always to our Patreons for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. We're getting ever closer to 100,000 subscribers, which is absolutely fantastic, really is unbelievable. Anyway, I hope you are all well, take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.